Before we get started with the video, I want to let you guys know that the questions and answers video is ready, but I ran into some problems trying to upload it, so you'll have to wait a little longer for it. The main topic of this video is to talk about the new season of Baki Hanma. The second season on Netflix has been a smash hit worldwide. A lot of new people, some who weren't even fans of the series before, have fallen in love with Baki, which is amazing. The fights were incredible, and because of that, everyone is talking about Baki on social media. As a content creator focused on Baki, I wanted to share my personal thoughts on this season, especially on the Baki vs. Pickle fight. In short, this season lived up to my expectations and left me feeling good. Maybe the animation had its weak spots, but the artwork was as beautiful as the last season. Now let's talk a bit about the Baki and Pickle showdown, because I noticed that many people didn't like it. Most said the fight dragged on and was kind of bored. They had the feeling that Baki had been beating up Pickle the whole time, which they didn't like. Some even argued that it wasn't fair that the other fights were so short, while Baki's fight lasted three episodes. I also saw someone mention that Baki not using the demon back made Pickle look bad, suggesting Baki was just toying with him and never planned to go all out. Honestly, some points are valid, and I hate where they're coming from. Actually, when I first read this fight in the manga, I found it kind of boring too, but after watching it animated, I changed my mind about it. Anyway, let's debate this a bit and dive deep into this fight to see if it's really as bad as many claim. Let's start by talking about the length of the fight. If you think this fight was long in the show, you haven't read the manga. In the manga, the fight went on for more than 20 chapters. The animation studio did an awesome job condensing all those manga chapters into just three episodes of the series. Before this season came out, I was worried about how long the animated fight would be, but in the end, I was pretty happy with the duration. Usually, fights in Baki don't drag on for too long. Only a few have spanned several episodes. So I guess that's why many felt this one was way too long. Since fans are used to shorter clashes, most might think an average length fight feels excessively long. About the fight's progress, a lot of people complained that Baki seemed to dominate from the start. While Pickle had his moments, in the end, Baki always managed to keep up and ultimately outdo him. For many this made no sense, I mean, after a 30 meter fall, Baki shouldn't even be standing, right? Both Haniyama and Retsu were totally amazed that Baki could even get up after that. Perhaps they were wondering if they themselves could survive a fall from that height. I also thought it was pretty crazy that Baki jumped back up and kept fighting like it was nothing. But the idea was that this action activated the endorphins in his brain, which are activated when he is in danger. Personally, I think it would have made more sense if he had used the demon back from the beginning. Which brings us to the next question. Why didn't Baki use the demon back against Pickle? It's worth debating since Baki used the demon back against Oliva Biscuit, but not against Pickle, who seemed stronger than Mr. Unchained. I'm going to share my opinion on this, because I think Ifigaki really made a mistake here. The main drawback with this fact is that Baki, without even activating the demon back, was able to take on Pickle at his full power. This generates controversy for me, because it puts characters like Jack, Retsu, and Katsumi on a much lower level than Baki. I mean, we all know that Baki is stronger than them, and he has to be logically speaking. However, overpowering Pickle like that and without using his maximum power does nothing but confirm that Baki could defeat all of them effortlessly. For example, Retsu, who lost a leg fighting Pickle and only managed to hurt his eye. Katsumi and Jack also lost parts of their own bodies and only managed to do minor damage to the cavemen. So, Baki's showdown with Pickle kind of downplays what Katsumi and the others achieved. I understand that Baki needs to be portrayed this strong for his confrontation with Yujiro, but sometimes Ithagaki doesn't know how to establish a congruent power scale. His fight with Oliva Biscuit was pure fire. We saw how Mr. Unchained pushed Baki to the limit, forcing him to unleash his full power. This is what we like about Baki, characters who give their all in the fight without holding back. Now the following information is from the Masashi arc, so if you haven't read the manga, heads up, big spoiler ahead. During that arc, the legendary samurai takes down several fighters, including Pickle, making him run scared. The problem is that, in the final showdown, Baki takes on Masashi without even using the demon back, and by then Masashi was the strongest guy, second only to Yujiro. This feat just further proves that Jack and the rest are leagues below Baki. I bring all this up because it is key to understanding that if Baki had used the demon back, he could have taken Pickle down even faster. We all know Pickle won that fight, but for some reason it kind of felt like Baki was the real winner. That's because, as I said before, Baki was playing with Pickle all the time. It was almost as if Pickle was just a child to Baki. 
Unlike Jack and the others, this time, there wasn't that imminent threat of Pickle eating Baki. Pickle got the win of the desperate move, only because Baki got overconfident. Baki made that mistake in their first confrontation, so Pickle seized the moment and ended the fight once and for all. Maybe it's the benefit of being the main character, but unlike the others, Baki didn't look so bad after this clash, in fact, he showed that if he took the fight seriously, he could have defeated the caveman. This is my take on the narrative aspect of the fight, but as I mentioned in previous videos, visually this confrontation didn't seem bad or boring to me. Actually, I really enjoy this battle in the animated series, which is surprising because, when I first read it in the manga, it felt lengthy and sometimes draggy. Even though Pickle has been treated like a punching bag since he came back to life, it's clear that if he learned martial arts, he'd be virtually unbeatable. Yujiro had to use a technique, since the caveman outmatched him in raw strength. This is enough indication to think that if he mastered martial arts, even Baki wouldn't last five minutes in a fight against him. Pickle's amazing strength knocked Baki out twice. Imagine if he could harness it properly. Regardless, Pickle has immense potential still waiting to be uncovered. So, we shouldn't let that fight with Baki define his capabilities. On the other hand, the fight against Retsu was really good. The Kenpo Master was clearly outmatched by Pickle. In fact, he was the one who inflicted the least damage on the caveman. This fight was a representation of technique versus raw power. 4,000 years of martial arts didn't help Retsu much in this battle. Pickle practically mocked Retsu's martial arts throughout the fight. For Baki, however, it was quite different. As we could see in that fight, Pickle was subdued by Baki's martial arts and was forced to use his full power. This sets the groundwork for understanding that Retsu wouldn't stand a chance against Baki, even if he decided to use his Chinese martial arts. Interestingly, before fighting Pickle, Baki had approached Retsu asking for his help in training and to teach him some of his martial arts. But now that we've seen Baki's martial arts surpassing Retsu's, this request doesn't make sense anymore. All this gives me the feeling that Baki is becoming a younger version of Yujiro. Little by little Baki distances himself from his friends and becomes an unbeatable challenge. In fact, this will be further explored in future arcs of the series. I might make a video discussing Baki's narrative evolution. It will differ from his chronology, so I hope to bring it out soon. And since many are still asking about the second part of Baki's timeline, don't worry. I'm waiting for the Baki vs. Yujiro fight to be animated so I can add that material to the video. Timelines take a lot of time to create, so please be patient. I also planned on re-uploading Yujiro's timeline, but YouTube keeps blocking that video. It's not a copyright issue. They simply say it's not suitable for all audiences and apply a shadow ban instantly. I've made several changes to that video, but it always ends up the same. I guess I'll have to redo everything from scratch. For now, I'm wrapping up this video since I just wanted to touch on this topic briefly. I'll be uploading the questions and answers video soon, so stay tuned. With nothing more to add, see you soon. Take care, and remember to exercise. And well friends, thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.